Hey everybody, welcome back to Factory Floor, our Shop Talk spinoff all about the factory experience at AU. I'm Jonathan Odom, and in the last episode, we explored injection molding and how Fusion helps you design parts that are ready for real world manufacturing. Today, we're shifting gears and talking about something that's come a long way in recent years, 3D printing in production. In this episode, I'll show you how 3D printing can give your products more flexibility and let you create low cost parts with complex geometry. Let's get into it. So we'll start with our first product, which was the air quality sensor. And we did a 3D printed part on this. Um, that's a pretty good illustration of why you would use it with consumer products. So we made this version one. It was really popular. People, are, people wanted more um, for following years. So we had a, a few things we already knew. The um, injection molding for this part was done. We'd already sunk that cost. So also we know that the sensor and the battery are not going to change. So this part makes sense. We also know people like the housing. They like the round shape. This might may change slightly because it's CNC machine. There's no sunk cost in, the, in any tooling there. But um, we thought it's safe to say that this is going to not change. This is not going to change. So that's why that's injection molded. And then there's a part in between the PCB and this that keeps everything together, keeps things from rattling around inside, that is this spacer. And we decided to do this with FDM 3D printing. The reason for that is that we knew for version two, certain things might change. Uh, the PCB, for example, we knew that was gonna change because we had this kind of double layer Frankenstein thing um, that I explained in previous episodes. But knowing that this was probably gonna be thinner this was this made perfect sense because we're only making 500 of them and we can just make different ones in the future and it's not going to be a problem to produce those um with 3d printing you're paying basically you're paying for the the material right there's some time involved but, but it, that you pay for if you're outsourcing it but for the most part you're just paying for the material so this part is uh is very you know it's thin the walls are two millimeters something like that um and uh it's printed without any support structures. This can stay right down on the build, pl build plate, no problem. So this, this is a perfect example of using it for consumer products. Another reason to, to use it in this case is that this is hidden. So you can do a fast print that doesn't have a really nice smooth finish. You can let the, the layer lines show up from your FDM machine. None of that's a problem because it's all hidden inside once it's put together and it doesn't, you don't sacrifice any you know, finish quality by going with a part like that. So this worked out perfectly for us. We saved a lot of money on it. And uh, Fusion, obviously, is a great, a great way to, a great tool for 3D printed parts for a number of obvious reasons. Version two, I'll quickly show you that because you can see how that part changed as we changed the, uh, the device. So again, same injection molded part. But with this device, a couple things changed. One was that we have a new PCB. It's only one layer, right? There's no, there's no extra backpack boards on it except for this, which is the Wi-Fi shield, because we had Wi-Fi connectivity with this one. So we were able to toss that other design for the older version and make this one, which gives you space for that shield gives you exactly the correct spacing height so that this part doesn't travel in any, any way it's not supposed to. And once again, we can print that on an FDM machine with no support structures. So it's a fast print, um, it's cheap, and again, it can be uh, you know kind of, of, of lesser finish quality because it's inside the device and it's not, uh, not gonna be seen by anybody once it's assembled. Okay. Then product number two was this badge. This one has more 3D printed parts. We did quite a, quite a few more. And the reason for that is that the big idea behind the design was that we would be able to connect devices to each other, to you know pass information back and forth, play games, that kind of thing. That there would be accessories. We'd bring this back in another year and now you'd have a a fan for when you've got, you know, uh, Autodesk University in, in New Orleans next time. Um, that you could use this as a, as a power source and a controller for just about anything. The connectors we had access to for this, uh, again, this was during the COVID lockdowns, and we had, there were a lot of um, uh, parts that were really hard to get. 
and there were some new connectors coming out that we wanted to try in the future. So with this one, we just went with these little uh, pin connectors. These are old school. They've been around since the 80s probably. Um, and we needed a way to make them robust enough that you could plug them in and out over and over without anything getting uh, getting bent, right? So these these 3D printed parts um, serve that purpose. They align everything and they give they give it a um, kind of a, a a surface to bear on. Another reason we went with 3D printed parts for for these these interface parts right here is that with this TPU material, it's got this nice kind of rubbery tactile feel to it. Pretty pretty unique for this this material. It's an injection molded part for the enclosure knowing that we're not going to change the screen and that the PCB is probably going to be much the same. Same with the battery. We don't really need to, to change that stuff in the future. Let's find my correct bit here. Next one down. So as I pull these out, you'll see that there's several 3D printed parts. So another part here are these buttons. Again, with the buttons, um, it's a small part. This is a Fusion multi-jet process with all of these uh, parts on this product. And um, that means that you're able to nest parts in three dimensions um, so that you can get uh, a, a pretty decent volume with just one print job. That saves you on print time. So, and then these interface parts, another, another thing here is, uh, gives us a bezel, right? So um, we were on a tight timeline with these things and I wanted to be able to get this uh, just right with that, um, giving us a nice bezel to cover up the part of the screen that you shouldn't see. So having a 3D printed part that interfaces with the injection molded part, like so, allowed us to do that. The battery housing here, also 3D printed. And again, this allows us to maybe make a change later. You know, uh, in hindsight, it probably would have made sense to make this part of the uh, injection molded part because it would have been safe to say that this ba this battery is not going to change. But the other parts here, the the point of them really is to allow us to later on change these connectors to do something that's that's got a higher uh, bandwidth that can pass more data faster, that can connect to different kinds of devices and control them in different ways. And that would allow us to change that on the PCB, change this out, and then again, uh, keep that injection molded part get the, the cost of tooling out of the equation for future projects. I just want to stress here that um, this that using this process as liberally as we did with this product is probably not feasible for most production applications, but when you're dealing with 500 units, um, this is totally doable. You know, you, you end up spending, you know, if you did this project three times, so 500 runs three times, you make 1,500 of them, you're probably still not getting close to what it would cost to do an injection molding run of everything uh, each time. It just, it, it, you would never really get there because if you're changing things over, over time, that's kind of how that would stack up. Um, okay, so that's product number two. Product number three is the, the keypad. So with this product, we also had a couple of, uh, a few 3D printed parts actually. So these are kind of multi-purpose parts. So if you look at this end right here, um, there is part, part of this, um, this piece at the end uh, is closing a gap around the USB port in there. So that's one purpose it serves. Um, we also had these parts, uh, the 3D printed parts, serving as the female end of the snap fits. So the snap fit features on the enclosure interface with those parts. And I think the reason I did that was that I was really nervous about using snap fits because it was not something I'd ever tried before and it's not something I was really familiar with. So it made me nervous to try to depend on the uh, the CNC machined part for that. And since we already needed these spacer parts for the way we designed this product, I thought, well, why don't we just rely on these cavities to to play that that part? So 
oh, the, thre the threaded studs came off with this thing. I guess this has been assembled and disassembled enough times. And then these parts, they, they serve as a, as a spacer right there to kind of keep everything together. You can pull these out and pop them back in. Um, there are, there's a little shelf feature built into this, uh, this CNC part right there that this interface part pops into. This became a real pain when we were putting these together on site because uh, the, this material swelled more when we dyed it than we thought it would. The, the prototypes we had hadn't gone through the dyeing process yet, and they fit perfectly. So we went with that and didn't realize that um, that swelling was just enough to make this really tight fit and make it a little more difficult to put together. So that's one of the reasons we changed it in the future. This part right here serves two purposes. It holds the screen. So this is a housing for the screen to keep it in just the right spot. Um, and then it also gives you kind of a bezel, like a cowl basically for the, uh, for the, the, this scroll wheel right here. So a lot of lessons learned from this one, um, probably some overuse of 3D printed parts, I would say. There are some, some uh, places in here where we could rely on these other production methods and like really make uh, the 3D printed parts work the way they are uh, the most efficient in a design like this. So moving on to version two, could have done this so that this part was integrated into the injection mold, right? That would have been doable. This part right here, which is 3D printed, this is a nylon print on a Formlabs machine. Um, this is just serving as a bezel for the screen, also holding the screen down in place, and also kind of capturing this knob and finishing out the, uh, the, the edge of the, of the device over here. It's an aesthetic choice to make it a different, a separate part from this. It just makes the whole thing more interesting than just a, you know, kind of a boring calculator-like uh, casing on the top. Um, so this just pops off like that. Um, this is a rigid material, um, and it, the finish quality is is good enough that it um, it's presentable. Same thing with the, the previous part I showed. Um, and the, another thing this does is gives you a, a place to rest your finger that is also accommodating this, uh, this encoder right here, which is a little too tall for the whole profile of the device. So really clever uh, solution to that by uh, Jeff Smith right there. So yeah, this is one 3D printed part there. Very simple, you know, there's no, it doesn't have to um, pop into place like those, like the previous parts did. Um, really easy to put together. And then we have another 3D printed part here, which is handling the screen. But I think I'm gonna wait on that because this is maybe, which one should I do first? The order of putting this together is gonna be a little bit backwards here, but I think we'll be okay. So one, one tricky part of this other design, the, the previous design, is that um, the screen uh, kind of tends to get stuck in here. It's very sticky. The, the material itself is kind of rubbery, so it's a little difficult to get it in and out of there and to get it just in the right spot. And if you push too hard, you can, you can see the edge of the screen. You can see light coming through. So um, using a, making a rigid part for that was a much better solution. Again, this uh, also serves as a um, as a cowling for the uh, USB port, so it keeps you know dust and stuff from getting in there. And then it's it, it's also a much simpler part where it just kind of slides from the side, uh, and then the screen is is pushed in place. So another internal part here is the key plate. This is once again a very simple part um, that has a small amount of material and does not require support structures. So this is a great uh, candidate for FDM printed parts. Uh, FDM machines are cheap. You know, you we have them in house, a lot, of, a lot of companies do. And we were able to crank out 500 of these very quickly and get them, you know, get them into production in time. And then finally with this one, there is a last 3D printed part, which is the special key. So we had a bunch of these, um, fusion keys made so they are you know the, all the fusion colors and the logo and everything we made a 3d logo you can look at it from the side it's got depth to it um this was also done on a fusion multi-jet machine by hp um and this is really cool because you can do multiple materials uh, pretty quickly 
if we were to injection mold this part, um, this would be a at least a one, two, three, four, five, probably a 10 part mold, um, different steps along the way. Uh, and that would be really expensive tooling and it would take a long time to, to get these, get these done. So, yeah. And then this is, um, this is something fun we did at the factory experience, uh, last year, which is we worked with, um, Pete Parisi and a few other, uh, creators. So Pete Parisi came up with his own version of the enclosure, uh, and we had that produced on site by Prusa. Um, so they had their printers going and, um, his design had keys that are, um, uh, kind of a, I don't know, they're trapezoidal and they, they sort of, um, interconnected. They were multicolored as well. So they had, um, you know, like a, like a black outline and then colored keys and stuff. People really liked that one. This was cool. This part is a really good example of, uh, how you can make something that has really complex geometry that's also low cost. This geometry has to be complex because this part's doing several different things. Um, it has to be able to slide in from the side like so. Um, it has to have a cut there for the uh, for the um, the ribbon cable. It's got to have this lip under there that holds that in place. Um, it has to interface with another part right here. This is, if I were to do an injection mold of this, I would need one, two, three, four. I would need at least four or five different different parts here. It's just it's it's very complex, and you know you also have to take into account draft angles with that stuff. And um, it's this this is something you can just nest and print on a Form Labs Fuse One like this was done, and and you're done. You don't you don't have to go through all the work of getting the injection mold tooling correct. And it also opens you up to new possibilities for the future. Like uh, maybe maybe we can't get this screen anymore. Maybe we diff we need a different kind of screen for the future. Um, so yeah, the, the complexity part is, is kind of a big deal. You know, same thing with this part, right? Um, lots of different features here, a lot of holes, lots of, uh, a lot of work would have to be done to get an injection mold tool to make this part. Whereas by 3D printing, we can do this in a run of 500 and then we can get feedback and on the fitment and um, improve it for the future without sinking money into injection mold tooling, which uh, is kind of a, kind of ties us into our next episode, which is about fitment and feedback. What we're going to learn there is how you can get feedback from people that are assembling things or using the products and bring it back in to uh, improving things for the future, all using Fusion. That's it for this episode. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Uh, and thanks for watching. <laughs>